So I was literally just walking along and I saw this box sitting under this big stump and um, it's actually a geocache, so a cache. And there's all little bits and bobs in there. So someone's obviously set this up. Loads of little bits in there. It's actually really cute, especially for like kids or people who enjoy doing this. So yeah, the idea is you find it and if you want to take something from the box you leave something. So it's like a trade kind of thing. Because I did have the app that you could find these and then I like kind of gave up on it but yeah so it just explains what it's all about and I think this book has everyone who's found it so far so it's put here in 2003 the 31st of the 10th, 2003. And already loads of people have found it. There's actually loads, I think the whole book's full up. Yeah, the whole book's full up. The last people to have found it, it was in June. So just put that back. I didn't take anything because I can't afford to carry any more weight and I didn't uh, leave anything because I literally don't have anything to put in there, which is a shame. But yeah, there were some cute things in there. And yeah, though I think the tradition is you take something, you leave something. But that was a nice little place to put it in an ammo box. And I've just left my name in the little book where you like leave all your names. But that's been there since 2003. So that's crazy how long it's been there. And um, yeah, might find another cachet on the way. You're up in the sky.
just filled my all my water up so I've got a three litre camel back and a one and a half 1.2 litre clean canteen so that should last me for quite a while um, I might have to find somewhere else today to refill but yeah it's really hot today so I've got to kind of watch that and then I need water for like brushing my teeth and washing up and add into my rice and my porridge so for cooking. I'm just having my first stop it's like half ten and I'd say I walked about two miles so yeah it's going well the bag hasn't got too heavy and um, it feels good I think it's well it is the bag's designed for like a woman, that's what I like about it. I've got a snug pack Bergen that's 100 litres that I take like um, bushcraft in and things like that. But it's it doesn't fit right because it's made for a man I think so it just it really hurts on my shoulders and it just because all the weight's meant to go around your hips when you're hiking and it's quite uncomfortable walking a long way with that bag so yeah that's why I purchased this one it's got really thick um, hip pads so all the weight is like carried there and it doesn't rub or anything and it's got really thick um, shoulder pads which is really nice and I think the back's also shaped slightly different and it's vented so it's, um, lots of air can get through it. So these are the, the thick hip straps that I was telling you about which is so nice and it's got this nice mesh for your back so it keeps nice airflow going but I like these pads and they've also got big pockets that I can put like snacks and my phone, compass, things like that. So there's two of them pockets. And then it's got thick shoulder straps and then also at the top it's got a little gap so I can have my my water bladder coming through so I can drink on the go. I've been looking at the map and to get to Leaf Hill Tower is roughly six miles. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how far I'm going to go. We'll have to see.
so I've just stopped off again for another little stop. I think I've done about five or six miles so far. I've still got quite, quite a lot left of the day. But yeah, it's been a really nice walk. I've really enjoyed it. So I've just arrived at checkpoint two. It's been a hard day, <laughs> really tough. I expected to do a lot less mileage, but I um, ended up doing a lot more than I expected. So yeah, so I've got less distance tomorrow and the next day. It's, I think it's half four now. So I've been walking all day. So I'm just setting up my sleep system just blown up my air mat and I'm just going to lay the sleeping bag out but yeah I've really enjoyed today even though it's been tough it was it was good fun um, I met a lot of nice people along the way like fellow hikers um, yeah so really nice people met a couple from Australia that are doing like a really long hike um, just loads of different people really so it was really nice meeting like-minded people I'm set up in like a quite dense forest woods um, I didn't want to walk too far away from the path so I can pick it up back up tomorrow but yeah it's been it's been a tiring day. Got up at half five. I think I left that camp at like half eight and then I've just been walking and it's now five. So crazy. I didn't get lost though, that's one thing. I usually get lost. It's what I'm I'm renowned for. <laughs> Went to the tower got my bottle topped up and um, there's like a little shop on the side of the tower for like people and she topped my bottle up um, so yeah I've got enough water I've got my food I've got rice again and salami just keeping it nice and simple it was quite a it's quite a light light thing to bring and it's also a good meal to have when you've burnt a lot of calories so I'm just having a look at the map and seeing how far I came today I started here and then I walked along the gravel path and then I got to the farm where I filled up my water this morning and I'm all the way down, across this B road, A road even, 
and then and I come down this I came down this B road, crossed that A road, followed the national trail all the way down, went past that waterfall that I got a shot of, and then came down, down, down to the tower. I got a shot of that, kept following the National Trail all the way through here and now I'm in Hurtwood. So I've come quite a way. I started here and then I've run in here. So I just looked at the little key on the map to see how much um, is one mile on the scale. So I've got a little pencil. I'm just going to make a little indent on the bit that was one mile. So I've already sliced it a little piece. So that's like my marker for when I hit one mile when I'm measuring it out on the map. So that equals one mile. So I just measured it out, the distance, and it's really rough because the measurement of the pencil's rough and because it's not on the exact route. It came to 11 miles, so I was quite shocked because I it didn't feel like I was like I walked 11 miles today crazy and I wasn't expecting that considering I'm carrying that pack but there you go yeah I'm pretty chuffed with that <laughs> that's um new PB I'd say I'm just shocked because I've never walked that distance with uh, a ruck, like a heavy rucksack before. So I don't have as much distance for tomorrow and the next day now because I've made a lot of it up today, which is all good. Got less mileage to go. So it was so hard to find somewhere to to set up my tent. Literally everywhere is so overgrown with ferns and like holly bushes and just it's crazy. Everywhere is so overgrown and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to set up on the path. Um, luckily I finally come across this place which is really nice. It's nice and sheltered. It's near my path and it's not covered in in fern and, and loads of bracken and things like that so yeah I got away with that one so it took me a while actually to find somewhere but it was definitely worth it I like this spot it's nice um, yeah it's really nice I saw a deer when I was walking in here as well that rhymed um, yeah so I saw that, spooked that off. So it's a really nice location. Yeah. I also met this guy on my walk that near the waterfall. He lives in this house that's like re like quite remote for England anyway. And yeah, it was really nice. He was in the middle of the woods. Um in quite a big house and there's like trout lakes near him he's got that waterfall down the road it was just really nice and I was speaking to him and he said he's been there since 1987 I think it was and he said the first five years they didn't have any heating electricity um, anything like that for five years um, and he said he, he loved it and he's still living there now 
he's quite old now so so now he's got like electricity and things like that so he's got his comforts and he's got a wood burner he said it gets really cold up there in the winter but yeah he's living the dream it really is um, and it was nice being able to chat to people like this who have such interesting lives that's probably why the mileage went so quick just chatting to people on the way took my mind off it <laughs> So I absolutely love using this stuff at the moment, it's insect repellent, it's done such an amazing job. Um, I've just been using this when going out camping recently, obviously it's summer now so the mosquitoes are a lot worse. I just went down the river last week, sat videos on Patreon and I was using this a lot because obviously mosquitoes are awful on the river. So I just had two male roe deers come so close, obviously because it's quite camoed here and I'm on my own so I'm really quiet, they, um, they come so close and they were like proper investigating, oh. they both saw me though because my rice was going to burn if I didn't stir it. So. I had to stir this. I tried to just get the second one on camera and it spooked. This this bit of woods obviously gets so many deer in because that's three I've seen in this bit so far. There we go. <laughs> oh, it was so close. still hear it. It's actually a shame really how scared animals are of us. Like every animal that I've gone past today, like rabbits, deer, um, squirrel, they're all so scared of us. And birds, which is a real shame. But, you know, it's life. It's nature, isn't it? We're obviously the predator and they're, they're so scared of us. That's what I really like about doing these hiking trips and like camping at different places is because you do see more wildlife because they're not used to you constantly coming here so it's really unusual to see somebody sitting camping in the woods for them where our piece of woodland back back um, home they're, they're used to us always being there so they you don't see them a lot only when you go out and you go walking you find them um, but here they've just literally stumbled on me and they come so close and they were really like investigating because they're just it's unusual they're not used to it a lot of people do stick to the paths and don't wander off the path so they're just not used to seeing that. So I've got my rice now. So Cheers guys, I'm going to eat this. So it's my second night, it's crazy how quick it's actually going. And then I've got 
tomorrow night and then that's it so I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts so just preparing for bed now I've washed my face brush my teeth and I wash my feet as well obviously when you're hiking your feet are a priority I've only got a few blisters on my like toes where my foot's rubbed against the side of the shoe but other than that it's all good the back of my heels are quite sore but it hasn't blistered which is good I thought it would but it hasn't it's just a bit sore I'm going to get another early night and hopefully get up early tomorrow and uh, get out hiking. Night guys, I'm off to sleep now. Morning guys, I've woken up to heavy rain this morning so it looks like it's going to be a wet pack up. Um, I'm going to put everything into my bag and then pack the tent in last. I've got a black bag to put it in so it doesn't get all my stuff wet. But yeah, I slept well, really well. Um, it was heavy rain in the night and it was really windy. So yeah, wake up a few times to that. I'm getting quite low on water, so I'm going to have to find somewhere today. I've just been planning out my route this morning. So I left my pot outside last night to collect some rainwater. So I've got some water to drink today, as I knew I was pretty low. And I just checked, and there's literally... A teaspoon in in there. I think it's because it's such a small surface area, it hasn't collected that much. Yeah, so I was a bit shocked about that because it was heavy last night, and I thought it would have collected more than like a teaspoon. So that means I've really got to find some water today. So I've just packed up my sleeping bag and my roll mat and I'm eating some pop tarts. I can't cook my porridge because I don't have enough water. You have to add like quite a bit of water. I've been added, adding um, powdered milk and it needs quite a bit so I thought I'll just pass the porridge and have a pop tart. That's why I brought these as like back up in case I did run out of water or um, alcohol for my alcohol stove. So yeah, I'm going to have these for breakfast and then I'm going to pack everything into my bag so it doesn't get wet and then pack the tent in last and I'll be, I'll be off. So the rain isn't as heavy now, it's just um, drizzling really so it's not too bad. I've got a waterproof cover for my Osprey bag that I haven't used before so try that out. So I've just packed everything into the bag and I'm going to put this waterproof cover, the Osprey waterproof cover over the top so as you can see it folds up so small, it's tiny in this little bag. Um, it's the first time I'm going to use this and I might need to. It's actually stopped raining but I think it's going to start again later so better be safe than sorry.
I just got this off my tent. Um, it doesn't look it doesn't look the nicest, um, but so this is a filter that I've got here, so it's going to filter the water anyway. But um, it doesn't look the cleanest, obviously, because it's been on my tent. So the sun is actually starting to come out, which is always a good sign. I literally thought it was going to hammer it down because it suddenly went really dark when I was setting my tent away or packing it up. Um, so I've packed the mesh tent up, the the um, outer bit is just hanging up, trying to dry it out. So you could say I didn't really need to bring this mesh tent because of the weight and obviously I was carrying a lot of weight and it's just extra baggage really. But I knew that I'd be camping on a lot of slopes because this area that I'm hiking in pretty much it is on a slope um, everywhere and I knew that if I just took the outer skin then a lot of the water would run under and the floor would be wet I knew it was going to be raining so the floor would be wet and I'd be laying my roll mat down on wet, f wet ground really so this acts as like a ground sheet also protects me from the mosquitoes so I think this was worth the wait I wasn't sure whether to bring it or not I decided to bring it and I'm pretty glad I did now I think if I just had that that would have been soaking because the condensation in there was crazy this morning it was really wet inside and out hopefully it will start to dry out the sun isn't out it just keeps coming and going um, but I've brought a black bag black bag so I'm gonna put it in there so both the mesh tent and the outer tent come with a pack of these lightweight pegs which is really nice for hiking um, I haven't really struggled getting them into the ground because the ground's been quite soft but I think these are titanium and um, yeah they're really light lightweight so it's really good for hiking I think one of them's bent though already through trying to get into the ground because it's quite rocky ground yesterday but apart from that they've been great and I like that they're quite bright colours so you can see them when you stick them into the ground
So the sun finally came out. It wasn't meant to be sunny today, which is good. But I'm back on the trail. And um, yeah, I'm not sure how long I'm gonna do today. First thing, first priority is to get some water. So I've hiked for about a mile and a half now and it is so sunny so I ditched the waterproof, I've still got it on my rucksack though just in case. It's such a nice day. So um, I still haven't found any water yet which is a slight problem but hopefully I'll find like a farm, well I'm in a farm now but hopefully I'll find like a house or something that I can fill up from. I've got five miles until my final destination but I was planning on getting picked up tomorrow so I'll either do three miles today and two miles tomorrow or um, do the whole lot I'm not too sure depends what the water situation is like because I've probably got one litre left now so because I found some in my camel back so that's all I've probably got left but I love this stretch I've walked this before when I did the into the wild trip with the girls and we walked this stretch and it was it's really nice so I know all this route so I've put my map away
So I've been hiking pretty much all day. I had a later start this morning though and I've managed to get pretty close to my pickup point. Um, I've been looking around for somewhere to pitch up my tent for tonight but it's pretty difficult as this place is quite commercialised and there's loads of walking paths and car parks and things like that so I'm either going to have to keep looking and find somewhere that I can camp the night or or I um, get picked up so it's a hard decision because I don't want this to end yet it's been such a good trip and I was looking forward to tonight but there's literally nowhere to set up so I didn't think I'd make this checkpoint until tomorrow like I gave myself enough time and judging on my hiking abilities I didn't think that I'd make it this far in, in three days but here I am <laughs> I've reached the car park um, so yeah I'm either going to have to stay nearby and get picked up tomorrow or get picked up today so I will see So I finally reached my final destination. This is where I was planning on finishing. So this is a viewpoint I'm at. It's really windy at the moment. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I'm inside a wooden dome that was put here two years ago and I've always wanted to find it. Um, I wanted to find it because when we did Into the Wild two, two or three years ago um, they put our quotes on here on the wooden slabs on the outside so I'm just going to have a look and see if they're on here um, yeah but it's absolutely stunning it's so nice and I know in the Surrey Hills they make artsy things at the viewpoints and this is one of them. I plan to do this trip in four days. That's what I set myself to complete in four days. Um, but here I am on the third day and I've reached it, which I'm really happy about. Um, yeah I'm quite surprised I've reached this in three days I didn't think I was going to but it's been an absolutely amazing trip hike whatever you want to call it um, and I've really enjoyed it I definitely want to do something like this in the future and um, keep doing hikes before the winter comes just get a lot out of it it's really nice to do I'm ashamed to be going home today I'm getting picked up there's a car park near here which I'm getting picked up at
absolutely leave him. It's been such an amazing trip and uh, yeah I've really enjoyed it. It's been fab. Really inspired um, by people I've met along the way as well. Had a nice few chats with people, um, hikers and mountain bikers and things like that. So yeah, it was a really lovely place to finish off my hike in that dome place with that beautiful view and um, it's a shame I couldn't really have got here tomorrow and got picked up tomorrow um, there's nowhere really round here to camp either that's kind of suitable so yeah I'm getting picked up soon and um, I'm gonna go go back home edit this video so yeah it's just it's been a great really great hike and um, I'll definitely do something like this again probably do a longer route plan somewhere that's a bit longer now that I know um, the, what level I'm at now so thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it thank you to all my patrons and my subscribers